Hello, I'm here with Dr. James Edmondson, a technology analyst at ID TechX. James studies the EV and the energy storage market. James, in the electric vehicle market, what are you seeing as the main trends around materials for battery cells? Yeah, so it's interesting. When we look uh, on the diagram on the left here, we see that the battery cell obviously contains a whole lot of different components. And there are innovations going on around all these different components, really. Um, but just for today, uh, to mention the, the cathode as being the biggest and one where we're seeing such a uh, diverging market trend, really. And then we see in the middle here that uh, in this cathode market, we're seeing a much bigger increase in the uptake of nickel to reduce cobalt. So cobalt's very expensive um, and it also has some uh, historical questionable mining, um, mining uh, considerations as well. So we're seeing the companies essentially adopt high nickel cathodes a lot more rapidly. Now nickel's is not perfect. Is there a performance benefit with nickel cathodes as well or, or, or is yeah. it just for the other benefits you mentioned? Yeah, absolutely. So as we increase, uh, as we increase nickel, we're also seeing chemistries such as an NMC811, it's called, where we have this higher percentage of nickel, uh, but also has a much higher energy density as well. So as we see, we've got this nickel increasing, and cobalt decreasing, and then we can see in the chart on the right that this is, you know, also as well as the materials considerations, also leading to an increase in energy density at the cell level, um, which we've seen here going forwards. So even though we're seeing an increase in cell energy density and therefore a reduction in material utilization per cell, um, the electric vehicle market is growing so rapidly that the, the demand for all of these materials is still going to be increasing very rapidly over the next 10 to 20 years. Yes, on the chart on the right, that's quite a significant growth from 2015 to 2020. Will that continue at that rate or is there a cap and saturation as to how far the energy density can go? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we can already see in the last couple of years it, it slowed down slightly, but we are still seeing lots of innovations around cell format, for instance, with Tesla releasing their new 4680 cell over their 2170 that they used previously. Um, but obviously, these, this growth will gradually slow down, but I think in the next five to ten years at least, there'll still be a lot of uh, impressive growth in this sector. Um, and then potentially into the next decade as technologies like solid state batteries become potentially more um, viable, then we might see, uh, you know, more of a step jump again. And so with this cell energy density growth we see, what are the material innovations that are happening at the pack level? Yeah, so obviously when we talk about a battery pack, it isn't just a, a stack of cells. There's also some sort of pack that uh, goes around that. And we're seeing the energy density actually increase uh, for the packs as well if we forget about the cells. So essentially manufacturers are reducing the amount of materials being used around their cells and by in doing that you can essentially increase the amount of cells in your pack or you can uh, or you could essentially uh, reduce the amount of cells you need for the same energy density um, and we expect that trend to continue uh, similar to what we do with the cells where materials improvements are happening all the time and we've seen announcements very recently from, uh, for instance, BYD, which you can see on the right here with their blade pack, where they have these long prismatic battery cells with very little material utilized around the actual cells themselves. We've seen GM with their modular system for the Ultium battery pack, where uh, again, they're reducing materials around the cells. And then Tesla have even suggested essentially their new cylindrical uh, pack where the big new battery cells, which essentially don't have any coolant lines going flowing between them like they used to and they, therefore they can reduce a lot of these extra materials around. However, even given this reduction, a lot of these systems still require things like thermal interface materials, um, cushionings and encapsulants and even though we see a reduction per vehicle per se, um, you know, the, the vehicle market, the electric vehicle market in general is growing so rapidly that all of these materials still see an increase in demand albeit maybe not as quickly as if we stayed with the current pack designs. It's interesting the companies you mentioned are all um, auto makers. Yeah. So are they having this innovation in materials development for batteries and cells um, or are they work, working with battery companies? So who, who is really driving this innovation around you know, better material utilisation? Yeah, it's it's a bit of both. Um, for instance, if we look at the BYD pack, of course, in that situation, they're an auto manufacturer, but they're also manufacturing the batteries themselves. Um, 
but you could you could imagine that as the cell form factor changes from the from the uh, battery cell suppliers then obviously the automakers have to adapt their battery pack designs to deal with this in a lot of cases there's obviously big partnerships going on you could imagine for instance tesla and panasonic um, so a lot of this is being driven by the automakers essentially requiring this from the suppliers to to some extent Thank you. And that pie in the middle is really interesting, showing the shares of the, the pack weight going down year on year over the next decade. So you've done a lot of research, including, you know, very detailed forecasts over 10 years in this new report. Can you give us a brief overview about um, what it contains? Yeah, absolutely. So this new report we've just done on uh, its materials for electric vehicles, but we're talking about the battery cells and also the battery pack. So we talk about all the different materials used in the cathodes. So like I mentioned, nickel, cobalt, uh, LFP cathodes, these sort of materials, but also the anodes, so graphite and silicon um, and uh, other materials around that. So the casings, binders, all the things you could think of that might go into a battery cell. And then we also look at the pack level. So this is things like the enclosure with aluminium or composites. Uh, thermal interface materials used around the pack to uh, dissipate heat. Um, uh, other things like um, fire retardant materials for safety. So we really do try and cover all the different materials that are in both the cells and the battery packs. And then we look at this and forecast this over the next 10 years for markets, not just in the automotive car market, but also for uh, the heavier duty segments like vans, trucks, um, buses and also some of the smaller segments like uh, electric scooters and two wheelers as well. So we really do have a really uh, granular overview of the different materials required in, in, in the battery packs and cells. James, thank you very much. And for more information about this report, please take a look at the ID Tech X website. Cheers, thank you very much.